Yo, okay. Someone wanna tell me what the fuck just happened? Um, so I, being the devilishly handsome anime master that I am, decided to venture into the depths, the dep depths of the Fate franchise, uh, which I had not previously ventured, and watched the new Fate thing that came out this season by Studio Shaft, because I quite like Studio Shaft. They've done a couple of my favorite shows, so I'm like, you know what, it's Fate, it's Shaft. I have a general understanding of the Fate universe. I know you've got servants, you summon them, you fight, try to win the Holy Grail. Like, it doesn't seem too complicated, right? Wrong. It's very complicated. So, let me take you for, through this first episode here. Spoiler alert for the first episode of Fate. Hold on. Fate. 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 the fuck is the name of this anime? Fate Extra Last Encore is the name of this iteration of Fate. So let me take you through what happens here. So we first off, like, we open in this, like, fucking school. And it's, like, not, not very visually pleasing. Like, there's just some kind of, you know, desks. There's people, brown school uniforms, kind of, kind of lame. And uh, they're the teachers in class. She's like, yo, bitch, pay attention. I know this is boring for you, but you should probably pay attention. Just like, I should probably close my door while I'm vlogging so that I do not wake up my roommate. Um, and then he's like, oh, uh, what's this? And his classmates are like, hey, you're stupid because you like to sleep in class. And then he's like, uh... So this guy has just basically got no personality. Like, I'm, I'm not even fucking around here. Like, he literally... His, he does fucking nothing. He just kind of sits and broods and just doesn't doesn't talk at all, almost, except to, like, exclaim things or, you know, state the obvious, which is very Emi Ashiro-like. I really admire the dedication to carrying over that character archetype, except Emi Ashiro had a fucking personality and he was memorable. So we'll get to that. Anyway, so they're in this class, and then she... Then, then the exposition dump just starts right off the fucking bat. I mean, we're, like, literally less than 30 seconds into this show, and I'm already getting hit with the fact that there's, like, pseudo-crystals, furnaces, servants with fake bodies, then you've got, like, the limbo shit, um, where apparently you can, like, get destroyed. Also, there are 256 servants now in the battle? I thought there were, like, 12. Um, there were, like, 12 in Fate Zero. There were, like, 12 in Fate Stay Night. Fate Stay Night Unlimited Bladeworks was even a bit co incoherent to me because there are, like, three different Fate Stay Nights. So I still I don't got no fucking clue what's going on. So I'm just kind of along for the ride here because, you know, it's Shaft. It'll at least be visually appealing. And hey, you know, maybe I'll pick this up along the way. I didn't pick it up along the way. Let me tell you. I might just be dense or not a real Fate fan. Um, but then we cut to, like, you know, they're out on, like, lunch break or some shit, and, you know, there's a little bit of eternal monologuing and, like, you know, showing scenes and shit, um, but then we get to, like, this chess game, and there's, like, this hotshot phenom who looks like he's 11, and, you know, he beats this guy in chess, and the motherfucker just dies, like, literally, there's, like, this vision of a spear going through his heart, and he just fucking dies, like, he just drops right there. Um, so, I don't really, so apparently you can kill people by playing chess in this universe. That is a viable way by which you can end a person's life. Uh, so, so there's that. The guy dies, and our main character's like, ugh, I'm angsty. I should help this guy. So then he goes over, and he, like, touches his body, and, like, says a few things in Japanese. And then we find ourselves at the end, or, no, 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 no. It's a very important point here. And then Rin Tosaka shows up. Because, of course, Rin Tosaka would show up. Because, like... You know, it's not like this story takes place in, like, in the future or in, like, an alternate timeline or some shit. No, there's Rin Tosaka there. She, of course she's there. Why would Rin Tosaka be there? So Rin Tosaka's there um, in a slightly different uniform or in a slightly different outfit. There's, like, fucking, like, belts on, garter belts on her thigh highs now, which completely ruins the illusion of Zetai Doiki, um, which is just a very bad design choice um, because the character design... For her, just does not lend itself well to that. Um, so that that's also not working in its favor. So then she's like, we should go take him to the infirmary or some shit. I don't really know. It was still incoherent. 
Uh, and then we get to the infirmary, and oh, there's Sakura, because, I mean, I guess she's also there, you know, that really minor character from Fate Stay Night, unless it's Heaven's Feel, in which case I'm pretty sure she's a major character. I haven't seen Heaven's Feel yet, um, but in right in, in a limited play to work, she was a pretty minor character, all things considered, uh, so I really didn't get that much of her, but, you know, she's there, um, just infirmarying, because I guess that's just what she does, um, ah, uh, yeah, what happened after that? Okay, so, um... They got uh, so then Sakura and Rin are like, yo, after the um, after the um, infirmary gets all like trippy and Shinbo like, they're like, yo, you should take this dead body um, and dispose of it. And it's like, okay, fine, we're just gonna you know, dispose of a dead body because that's what normal high schoolers do. I mean, obviously these guys aren't normal high schoolers, but um, yeah, sure, that's that's what we're gonna do. So we go and we take the body. Um, he disposes of it, and, like, dissolves in, like, this little fucking, like, blurry purple shit. And then this, like, this scientist dude sits down next to him. And now I have no fucking clue what's going on here. So the scientist dude, like, exposits a little bit. I thought it was Kotomine and Kyure a little bit, because whenever I was looking up the show, I saw that Kyure actually ends up coming up. It is not Kyure, it is a scientist dude. Just pointing that out. Just make absolutely sure that none of you get confused like I was, um, so he exposits a little bit, um, and then we see, like, Fuki City for, like, a little bit, um, just as, like, a little flash to, like, remind you that you are still, in fact, in the Fate franchise, in the Fate universe, and that Fuki City is a thing that did happen, um, so just, you know, reminding ourselves of that, <sighs> so after that happens, um, more sh so shit kind of hits the fence after that like the the whole event for like i think the whole grail war is announced and like people start dying all over the place they're gonna you know we go we whittle it down to 100 participants and then those 100 participants at the school have to kill each other and make it like 28 or some shit still more than the original fate thing that i was brought up on you know back in my day you know this this is what this is all we got is like one two three four, four, five, six, six people on that poster. So, like, you know, this is a lot less than 28, certainly a lot less than uh, 256. So then, like, shit hits the fan, people start dying everywhere. Uh, and then Aradagi's voice actor, I'm pretty sure, same guy, I'm pretty sure it's the same guy, at least sounds like him. I didn't bother to look it up before making this video, stabs main character a bunch of times, because we know it was going to happen. Also, Shinji's also here. Uh, he's the Aradagi voice actor that I'm talking about. Like, he's here from the original Fate, so, I mean, I guess that's a thing. Uh, so he fucks over our main character, stabs him a billion times, but he gets up and starts living, and, like, we get killing montage again, and then this motherfucker finds his way all the way to the Saber chamber where Saber of Red is stored, uh, her sword is there, and, like, along the way, he gets, like, fucked up by this statue, moving statue of Shiro. Uh, I mean, like, he gets, like, he has an entire fucking piece of his torso, like, blown out. So, I mean, there's that. Um, that also takes place. Um, so he's, like, barely a human anymore, and he's still moving. He grabs a saber, summons the saber of red. So then this is, this is where my, the real problem that I have with the series so far comes. So this motherfucker... Goes around, doesn't do shit, monologues to himself, has zero personality, and then he gets to summon one of the five hottest servants in Fate that I have seen, and they happen to be a top five, like, you know, one of the top classes of servant? No. No. That's bullshit. This is all bullshit. Um, you don't get to just do that. If anyone deserves to just do that, it's the people who did that, like Emiya. Or, or, or Kiritsugu, you know, the people who are cool and deserve to have Saber as a servant. Or, um, fucking Arturia as a servant, which I guess this isn't Arturia, it's a Saber of Red, it looks like Arturia, but it's not Arturia, it's Neo Claudius, which, that also brings up an interesting moral dilemma for me as a Christian.